It is crucial to your success with options to understand how options are priced and how the pricing is affected. The price of an option consists of two parts, intrinsic value and extrinsic value. Together they make up an options price. Let's start with the intrinsic value. To understand this, it is important to understand the strike prices of an option. In my last video lesson, we discussed the different strike prices. As you can see, a call option is in the money or ITM when the strike price is below the trading price of the underlying. The call option is at the money or ATM when its strike price is the underlying's trading price or at least is around it. And it is out of the money when the strike price of the call option is above the trading price of the underlying. And all of this is the other way around for put options. If a put option's strike price is below the underlying's trading price, it is out of the money. And a put option is in the money if its strike price is above the trading price of the underlying. If you understand this, it won't be too hard to understand intrinsic value either. Intrinsic value basically is the amount that an option is in the money. To simplify this, I will give you some examples. The underlying of the call option is trading at $100. Therefore, the options with the strike prices from 95 to 99 are all in the money. The call option with the strike price of $95 is $5 below the underlying's trading price and is therefore $5 in the money. This means that the intrinsic value of this call option is $5. After the same principle, the call option with the $96 strike price is $4 in their money, because $96 is $4 below the trading price of the underlying. Furthermore, the call option with the strike price of $97 has an intrinsic value of $3. The call option with a $98 strike price has $2 of intrinsic value and so on. As you may have noticed by now, not all options are in the money. For example, the call option with a strike price of $102 is out of the money and thus not in the money. This means that it is $0 in the money and therefore has no intrinsic value at all. So not all options have intrinsic value, only the ones that are in the money. If in the money options had no intrinsic value, it would allow for easy arbitrage opportunities. Let's say a call option with a strike price of $95 has no intrinsic value and its underlying is trading for $100. This would mean that you could buy the call option very cheap, exercise it, buy the shares for $95 and immediately sell them again at $100. This would be a more or less risk-free trade. And this is the reason why intrinsic value exists for in-the-money options. But now let's move on to extrinsic value. Extrinsic value is nothing else but the remaining value of an option. This is the value of an option that is not intrinsic. The extrinsic value is affected by different factors. The two main factors are volatility and time. Volatility is a huge factor regarding option pricing. The reason for that being, if there is more volatility in the market, there are more opportunities to make money, especially with options. Therefore, option prices tend to be higher in times of high volatility and lower in times of low volatility. The next big factor defining the extrinsic value of an option is time left until expiration. Logically, if you have more time, you have a higher chance to be right and make money. Therefore, options with a lot of time left until expiration are more expensive than options with only little time left. Furthermore, there are few minor factors that may affect the extrinsic value of an option, but these are not so important for now. So summed up, the intrinsic value plus the extrinsic value equal the options price. But note that out of the money options don't have intrinsic value, that some very deep in the money options don't have extrinsic value either. Additionally, 
it is important to understand that option prices are not constant. They change all the time. For example, if the price of the underlying changes, the intrinsic value changes as well. Or if some days pass, there is less time left until expiration, and therefore the extrinsic value of an option can become smaller. In addition to that, volatility can also change, create more opportunities and make option prices rise. Now let us get into option creeks. Creeks measure changes in the options price that occur after changes in the different factors that define intrinsic and extrinsic value. I will now present you the most important option creeks. To explain them easily, I will use an example on every creek. For all these examples, you can assume that the underlying stock ABC is trading at $100 and the call option is initially worth $10. One of the most commonly used option Greeks is the Greek delta. Delta is the amount which the option price is expected to move of the $1 move in the underlying price. For this example, we will assume that the delta for our option is 0.5. A delta of 0.5 on the call option would mean that if the underlying price would move $1 to the upside, the call option would be worth $0.5 more than it was before. So if the price of the underlying would rise to $101 and everything else stayed the same, the price of the call option would be worth $10.5. If the underlying price would fall by a dollar, the options price would again change by 0.5 dollars, so it would then be worth 9.5 dollars. Note that delta is not constant. Together with the price of the underlying, it is changing all the time. The next essential option Greek that I want to present is gamma. Gamma measures the change of delta of the one dollar wide move in the underlying. For this example, we will say that the gamma for our call option is 0 0.1. This would mean that for every one dollar move in the underlying, delta changes by 0 0.1. I will try to show this with an example. Our underlying is ABC and it is trading for 101 dollar. The option is worth $10.5 and the delta for that option is 0 0.5. If the underlying now moves up by $1, the gamma of 0 0.1 will mean that delta will change by 0 0.1. So the new delta would be 0 0.6. This means if ABC is trading at $102, the option will be worth $11.1 after a one dollar move in the underlying, the options price will change by the delta. The delta will change by the gamma. So if our ABC would trade for one hundred and three dollars, the delta would again change by zero point one. So the new delta would be zero point seven, and therefore the new option price would be eleven point eight dollars. This of course also works to the downside. Let's say ABC is now trading for $99, the option is worth $9.5 and the delta is 0 0.5. If ABC drops by $1, the delta would again change by 0 0.1. So the new delta would be 0 0.4, meaning that the new option price would be $9.1. After another $1 drop in ABC, the new delta would be 0 0.3, leading to a $8.8 .8 option price. As you may have noticed by now, this can work in your favor or against you. Either you earn more and more and lose less and less on every $1 wide move, or you earn less and less and lose more and more. But more on that later. These two Greeks both are linked to the price of the underlying and thus measure the intrinsic factor. Of course, there are also option Greeks that measure price changes from the extrinsic factors. These are the ones I want to discuss now. Let's begin with Vega. 
Vega measures price changes in the option of the 1% change in volatility. For this example, our Vega is 0 0.4. If our option initially would trade for $10 and volatility would increase by 1%, the option would then trade for $10.4. The next option Greek is Theta. Theta is basically time decay. It measures how much money is gained or lost after every day. So a theta of minus 0 0.1 would mean that an option would lose 0 0.1 dollars every day. Additionally, there are some other less important Greeks, like Rho. Rho measures the change in the option's price of a 1% change in interest rates but this can be disregarded as long as you don't plan on trading any very long-term options that are also known as leaps. Option Greeks are very important when trading options. You should always be aware of them and see how they affect your positions. A common analogy is that an option Greek is just as important to trading as a dashboard and steering wheel is to driving. Just like I mentioned earlier, option Greeks can either work in your favor or against you. The option price can either increase or decrease after changes in certain factors. That is why I created this helpful table displaying the effect of the factors on different option positions. The plus means that this option Greek will be positive for the position and the minus means that the Greek will be negative for the position. Here we can for example see that theta or time decay works in favor of short puts and calls, but it works against long puts and calls, so long strategies to constantly lose some of their value every day and short positions to gain some value. Additionally, you can see that when you have a long call, delta will be positive. This also holds true for gamma. This means that the more the price of the underlying increases, the more you gain on every one dollar increase. Positive vega means that an increase in volatility is profitable. Tables like these can help you keep track of the different option Greeks. To download it and learn more about options, you can visit tradeoptionswithme.com. But for now, thanks for watching.